Aya. This is Druid Cat. Welcome to my course. In this lesson, we're diving deep into the world of AI influencer creation, and this time, we're leveling up. You've probably already seen what the new ChatGPT and image generation tools can do, but now we're going beyond basic prompts and messy results. We're going to create a high-quality, consistent influencer, Laura, and we're not cutting corners. You'll learn how to improve your LoRa training workflow for better consistency. Use advanced tricks with the one model for photorealism. Combine upscaling, in-painting and motion tools to enrich your dataset. Take advantage of several new and updated workflows. Build a pro-level dataset with better diversity, styling and expressions. And of course, test your LoRa with refined tools for final polish. The goal to make your influencer model look stable, professional and usable in production, not just something to show off for fun. This course requires access to my Patreon materials, so I highly encourage you to support the channel to unlock full access to the custom templates, workflows, tools and bonus assets used throughout this tutorial. You're not just buying files, you're investing in your craft. Step 1. Head over to runpod.io and sign up for an account if you haven't already. Before launching anything, add $10 to your account. This isn't for spending all at once. It's just a precaution. If you forget to shut off a running pod, that extra cash will quietly disappear. Next, click Deploy Pods. Then select Community Cloud. Click the little Wi-Fi icon and switch speed to Extreme. This option will not change the price. Once that's done, click Change Template and select one of the custom templates I've prepared, depending on whether you're training, testing or editing. By the way, I explain this entire setup process in detail in every one of my courses. So if this is your first time watching, please go check out the previous videos. Learning AI is like learning math. It all builds on what came before. If you jump into the middle of the formula, you might feel lost. Start with the basics and everything will make a lot more sense. Lately, everyone's been raving about the new ChatGPT update that lets you create stunning photorealistic images. The internet exploded with bold headlines calling it the best AI model to date. And to be fair, it kind of is, at least in certain use cases. When it comes to generating photorealistic portraits, tweaking angles, or making those viral edits like Ghibli-style animations. This version of ChatGPT does a fantastic job. But here's the thing. We're about to build a consistent influencer, and unfortunately, that's where ChatGPT starts falling short. And I'll explain exactly why. So I went into deep research mode. I started with a prompt, and let me tell you, ChatGPT gave me the most beautiful, overly detailed description imaginable. We're talking walls of text describing a red-haired influencer in painfully poetic language. The kind of character sheet. It was a masterpiece of a prompt, honestly. But then I generated the images and the results were just kind of meh. Sure, there was a hint of realism, but the image quality was weak. They lacked detail and sharpness. And what stood out even more all the generated faces started looking the same. Not in a branded identity way, but in that uncanny, copy-paste AI way. They didn't feel real. Fun fact. Cats would 100% use AI to generate more comfy boxes. Infinite boxes. Box GPT. Okay, let's get back to our case. So I took one of those low-quality full-body shots I got from ChatGPT and decided to give it a little boost. I dropped it into my own custom workflow, Flux Upscale Details Demon, I've shared with my patrons in my RunPod template. On the left, I had the original image straight out of ChatGPT, blurry, basic, a little off. And on the right, the same image, post-upscaling, and it looked so much better. Not perfect, but way closer to something you'd actually want to use. That enhanced version gave me a realistic full-body image, 
complete with proper toes, hands, facial features, and a natural pose. And once you have that, you can go a step further. Use one image to video workflow to generate different angles, full rotations, and multiple expressions for your character. That's how you build consistency by creating a proper data set from quality input. So the game plan was simple. Create two strong base images, one square, close-up shot for the face, and one full body image in portrait ratio, 9 by 16. That's all we really need to move forward. Step 2. Now, let's move into RunPod. We're going to load up a template for one image to video generation that I've also made available for patrons. It'll automatically launch Comfy UI with all the extras pre-installed. After you click Connect, a port will open 3040 for Comfy UI and 8888 for Jupyter Notebook, which is super useful as a file manager. This template can take around 20 to 30 minutes to fully load because it pulls in nearly 100 gigabytes of models. Yeah, it's heavy, but it gives you access to the full open source one model and a bunch of tools we'll need. Once Comfy UI is open, head to the Workflows section and load the one called 1720p with LoRa Image to Video. This is where we bring our character to life in motion. Inside the workflow, you'll see a sample prompt and a trigger word. Something like Rotation 360 degrees. Load your base image in the Load Image node, right-click, and you're good to go. The goal? Generate smooth, consistent 360-degree rotation videos. We'll do this for both the full body image and the close-up face shot. That way, we'll have plenty of high-quality frames showing different angles and expressions. Perfect material for training a proper LoRa model. I also packed this template with bonus LoRas. You'll find a note above the Load LoRa Model Only node listing what's included. Think fun transformations like 360-degree rotation, turn to ashes, baby transformation, princess glow-up, aging time-lapse, super cyan mode. Just a reminder, set the right resolution. For full-body portraits, that's 720 by 1280. Make sure that resolution is set in the prompt and also in the workflow nodes, like one to image video. That's the sweet spot where the model works best. Also, make sure your base image is well cropped before you begin. Don't let the model resize things automatically. It'll ruin your composition. As for the video length, don't stress it too much if you're just training a LoRa. Set the length param to something like 13 frames. That gives you enough diversity without overloading. If you're aiming for top quality, be sure to disable the One Video T-Cache node. It speeds up generation using a RELL One Thresh trick, but it adds motion blur. For training purposes, better to keep things crisp, so we will bypass it. Once your rotating video is ready, go to the File Browser and open it in your browser. Right-click the video, click Save Frame As, and start pulling out the best keyframes. You don't need all of them, just the good ones with varied poses and angles. Step 3. Create a clean folder, and that's your influencer dataset. So once you've got a bunch of strong keyframes saved, different angles, poses and expressions, now's the time to prep that dataset for training. You'll want a balanced set. Make sure you have roughly the same number of full-body images as close-up facial shots. LoRa training is all about consistency. The more balanced and clean your input, the better the model output. LoRa loves consistency. That said, if you feel like your dataset is too small, here's a quick trick. Open your full-body shots in GIMP or Photoshop and flip them horizontally. If you need to flip a bunch of images at once, use something like Irfan View. Go to File, Batch Conversion, then Options, Advanced, check Horizontal Flip, and run it. Super quick and handy. Step 4. 
We can keep this data set as is if we're training a Laura for something like a book character, where we need them to always look exactly the same, same hairstyle, same outfit. But if we're creating an influencer for social media, we'll probably want them to be more flexible in terms of clothing and hairstyle. All right, now comes the fun part, customizing your influencer with different clothes, hairstyles, maybe even accessories. Let's go to RunPod. Load my Flux template that was discussed earlier. Open port 3020, skip the intro pop-ups and load the simple in-painting workflow. Choose a prompt like a red evening dress or wearing a leather jacket. Load your image, right click and choose Open in Mask Editor. Paint over the clothes or hair you want to change. Hit Run as Generate. Now go wild. Make 10 different versions with various outfits and hairstyles. It adds range to your dataset and gives your LoRa way more flexibility when generating outputs later. Step 5. Next, let's clean things up even more. Let's remove background. We can use workflow from OpenArt that I'm displaying now. I attached link to the description. This workflow is simple and easy. Step 6. Back to RunPod we go. Click Deploy and this time choose Community Cloud Extreme Speed GPU L40S. Click Change Template and select Better Flux Gym CUDA 12. That's the different template than in the previous tutorial. I use for LoRa training now. It's more stable. Click Edit Template and reduce the storage from 350 gigabytes to something like 200 gigabytes, more than enough. Then hit Deploy on Demand and again, give it around 15 minutes to fully spin up. Once it's running, log in to Flux Gym, enter your LoRa name and create a unique trigger word. Upload your cleaned and edited dataset. Now set your training steps, don't go overboard. Keep it between 800 and 2,000 steps. The suggested 5,760? Now nah, that's too much. Set repeat train per image to 8. Epochs to 4 or 5. Click add AI captions with Florence 2. This will auto-generate captions based on your images, which really helps during training. Enter some prompts in sample image prompts and tell it how often to generate samples. Then set resize dataset image to 1024 across the board for consistent scaling. At this point, your config should give you around 1152 total steps, a sweet spot. Before we start training, let's go into the advanced parameters. The only thing you really need to pay attention to is the LoRa rank. It's currently set to 4. This value determines the size of the final file and how many details will be captured during training. For character models, we don't need too much detail. Actually, too much is not recommended, as it can lead to overfitting. Simply put, an overly detailed LoRa can harm consistency. The default value of 4 is a bit too low. It's best to set it somewhere between 8 and 16. Just be careful with 16. Based on my own tests, it turned out to be a bit too much. In most cases, 8 will work better. Now just click Start Training and, yep, time to be patient again. Step 7. Once the training is done, you don't need Hugging Face for downloading anymore. Go to port 7777 in your pod. Open the Flux Gym Outputs folder. You'll find your LoRa files in a subfolder with whatever name you gave it. Let's say, Anna. Inside, you'll see multiple .safe tensors files, some from earlier epochs, like underscore 004, and some final ones. Download the one you're most happy with. Step 8. To test your LoRa, use my updated Flux template. Deploy it, give it some time, maybe even 15 minutes again, since I packed it with new workflows and features. Once ready, Go to port 8888, Jupyter Notebook, and drag your LoRa file into ComfyUI slash models slash LoRas. Then open ComfyUI, refresh the page if it was open already, 
and load the text to image turbo workflow. In the LoRaR loader, select your model, for example, Anna. Set strength to 99, add your trigger word, don't forget it. Add a prompt, hit generate, boom, you're testing your LoRa. You can even switch the base model if you want. I've got Fluxdev and Jibmix both loaded, so feel free to experiment. I would like to recommend the Ultra Real Fine Tune Flux model. I put a link in the description. You can fast upload it in Jupyter Notebook by using curl command and civet AI token. I covered that process in previous tutorial. I put a command template in the description. You need to go to comfy u i slash models slash diffusion models and open the terminal. After you download the model, you need to replace UNET loader, GGUF node, to load diffusion model node in any workflow you want to use this ultra real fine tune flux model. Final thoughts. LoRa is still the go-to if you want precision and control. The entire process, from deep prompting, upscaling, angle generation, dataset prep, training and testing, is smooth once you've got the tools dialed in. As a gift to the community, the LoRa we trained together in today's course, Anna, is fully open source and available for everyone to use, test or remix however you like. You can download her right now from Civit AI, no credit required, no strings attached. She's yours, whether for personal projects, creative experiments or just for fun. Enjoy. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks a ton for sticking around. If this was helpful, hit that like, drop a comment, subscribe, and definitely check out my Patreon for access to all the templates and workflows I mentioned. Have fun. Happy generating. Hey.